Hey guys, welcome back to the Ride Right Waxing channel. So we've got a plethora of snowboards coming. So the next three videos are purely dedicated to the world of snowboarding. And we're going to start off with this banging board, which is basically off to the Alps this weekend. So we've got to flip this bad boy around and make sure it's absolutely ready to fly. Beautiful setup, I must say. The Capita uh, Death Will Tremble. Really, really nice board. I think it's a 153 looking at it. It's got 53 on the side. Um... But yeah, absolutely lovely. It's got a bit of a few little marks. We've got a nice big gouge mark right down through there. Be very lucky not to break through to the core, which is lovely. So we'll be able to get that top scrape, uh, those high spots off. And uh, we've got a couple more gouges here. We've got another one there, which we're going to sort out. And uh, the board's quite dry. Um, but more importantly, uh, the customer has actually complained that uh, the Burton step-ons, which are, by the way, awesome. I use Burton step-ons uh, on my board. And do go across and check out my uh, Battalion Camel too. Um, but lovely setup with the white sides. I must admit, complements the board really, really well. But they keep coming unscrewed. Now, how and what we use for that scenario is very, very simple. I'm going to pop you in my hand in a minute. We're going to have a detailed look. So... If you want to get yourself some of this Loctite 243 blue Loctite, not green. Green is really aggressive and I worry about the threads in the board, um, but this will hold it in quite nicely. So we'll talk these up, but you always really do. You don't just kind of start in one, you kind of cross pattern it and then you get a little bit tighter and you get a little bit tighter and then you bed the actual pressure of the binding down collectively. But like I always say, do make sure when you come back from skiing, snowboarding, more importantly with snowboarding, just release those bindings off, reducing any pressure on the base of the board, so stopping any indentations in the base of the board. If you store it somewhere like in the loft or garage, the temperatures change quite rapidly, especially in the loft. So other than that, if you're going to keep them attached, pop the board in the back of the wardrobe. And that's what's really cool with these Burton step-ons. They fold down and they're lovely and flush. We don't have the straps on. And uh, yeah, like I say, these are the version that I've got because they don't have the rubber inserts, not the version two. And uh, yeah, I absolutely love my Burton step-ons. And I love this setup. Just check that out, that skull. Um, absolutely awesome. But anyway, I'm rambling on. We're going to have a look at this sweet ride, pop it in my hand and uh, have a quick look, see what we've got to do. Here we go. So it's typical Capita fashion. We've got that lovely kind of pointy nose just here. One that kind of keeps in, in theme with the devilish look of this awesome board. And those, like I said, those white bindings really do complicate, um, complicate, complement this setup. Uh, we'll give the top coat a bit of a polish as well, but we do that when we take the bindings off. So let's have a quick look at the binding. Front foot, we're running that on... I would say a 15, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So there's the arrow just there, 15. And uh, like I say, uh, a goofy rider, I would say. That's the front of the board. Uh, so goofy rider. And on the back foot, we're running that there. So we've got the symbol just in the middle there. So right in the star. And we're also running that on the 15 as well. So a real... Um, kind of neutral stance, 15-15, which is quite a popular stance nowadays, um, should I say. Um, but yeah, just quickly checking in there. Is there any markings? Again, sweet, straight in the middle of that one. So we know where the four screws set up and line up is. And uh, yeah, just fantastic. Let me just pop this bad boy over a second. Bear with. Bosh, there we go. So, what is in need of this board? Um bit dry, a bit edgy just in some places. We've got some, just some corrosion just on the rails. Uh, just to kind of zoom in a little bit. There we go. Um, whoa, get some flashing coming on the camera. Zoom back out. Bosh! Got gouge mark just there. Got a heavy gouge mark just there. That is the big one. And you can see the colour change just in there. So that's picking up the white from that skull. Very close to a core shot, that one. But we're going to get that looking tip top. Board itself is quite dry. We've got quite an indent indentation there. So we'll see what we can do with that. It's quite a high spot just there. So we'll see if we can base scrape that before having to lay. Because it's quite a thick channel of PTEX in there. Um, and then we've got some marks just down through here. Um... 
But yeah, not too bad. Bit of dirt up on the nose. Just quickly check out the side rail a second. All right, there we go. So the side rail is in need of some love, but we're going to get that sorted out as well. That awesome tool just over there, that thing absolutely rips. But before we can do any of this, we're going to strip off the bindings. So let's pop the ball back down. Let's pop it in the stand. Let's stick some tunes on. And let's get on with this very Halloween-y capita. Here we go. the camera would only but focus on this there is the uh, side rail as we can see it now this black area here this is actually foam to uh, take out the shock which is pretty awesome and uh, what we're going to do now we use my magical tool pop it on time lapse and we'll have a quick look at it afterwards And there we are, one consistent shiny rail all the way down that board. Now, if I were to put a bit of shadow onto this, you can see the shine. And we've got that nice angular, but more importantly, check this out. Back of my nail, no pressure, literally. That is literally no pressure. And we've got plenty of nail coming off of there which is now that is razor sharp. And I know that because I just caught my knuckle on it and cut it open, which is a beauty. But anyway, there we go. Now we're going to dull and tip the ends in with a gummy stone just to reduce any catching. I'm going to do that now. This is just polish on here. So I put a layer of polish down then when I can buff that off and I'm going to put some ceramic coating on the top of this board and make it look lovely. And uh, yeah, there we go. So an awesome shiny rail. So crack on with the base. Okay, so this mothership has been set. It's now the following morning, nice and early. Sun is uh, gonna come up, or should I say the rain is still falling, and um, we're gonna get this board now fully stripped. The wax is laid on. Now, in the previous part of this video, um, what I actually did was I laid, there's a very deep, deep gouge here, which we've laid, and there's a really deep gouge, kind of claw mark at the base. We flattened that off, we flattened that off, and there's obviously other ones around the board. I actually had quite a lot of p-tex marks to get the board extremely flat um we've done a really really good job with that it is all super super flat we actually did a, a hot wax scrape as well even though the board did come up relatively clean i put the hot wax on the board because we base scraped and put a lot of p-tex on it we then copper brushed it and put the structure back in the base of the board after done and tipping the ends um and basically yeah we basically did a hot wax scrape so we laid the wax down we used a scraper and then as the wax is setting, almost kind of like an exfoliation, we wax stripped the board, pulling all that dirt and grime out. And it's surprising actually how grubby and how dirty that board was, um, especially in the darker areas. Um, there is some discoloration to the wax that's on there. That's just because of the colour of the wax we melt down. Um, but we're going to base scrape them. Uh, sorry, base scrape. We're going to wax scrape this board now, and then we're going to polish it, detail it with multiple brushes, and this thing's going to come up lovely. So we've made sure we've got loads of wax into this board, so it's going to be super fast and uh, yeah, be on point. Those edges are really dialed in. 
I'm really pleased with those. And now it's just time to have some fun and get the thing polished up and back to the customer. So, like I say, quick flip around on this one, but we've let it set overnight, so it's nice and cold now. So that wax is really, really setting the pores of clothes. Anyway, I'm gonna put you some tunes on and we're gonna crack on and get the mothership back to its owner. Here we go. <laughs> What a turnaround. I am really, really happy with this board. Really, really happy because it had quite a lot of gouges in the board and uh, it's come up lovely. Absolutely lovely. Check out the shine on that. And I should do this more often. I'm going to pop you in my hand and if I can, I'm going to try and pop up on the screen the gouge that was in here that basically runs through the face um, that was nearly down through to the core, but it wasn't. So we've been able to put PTEX in that. And there's that major big claw mark, which we've managed to fill as well. So let me just pop you in my hand a second. So here we are, what shine. Now that is that big mark that goes down through the board that is now completely flat. We had a massive gouge just here. You can see the PTEX mark, which I've laid down. But again, that is completely flat. That was a real undulation. Um, but the shine on the board, as you can see, you can see the shadow of the camera. It's come up superb well. These are all flat. These are obviously quite big gouges, but the clear PTEX that I've laid in, they're just lovely and flat. You can still feel them very, very faintly. That edge is all sharp and detailed. And basically, yeah, the board's come up lovely. Let's pop you back in the stand. So I think you'll agree that has come up superb really really well i'm really pleased uh with the p-tex now yes you can see it um unfortunately because the marks in the board can't obviously hide it it's better than putting black in we've got that clear in so it's translucent so you can still see the mark but the idea is that it's flat and you can now seal this board and it's flat all the way over it's polished and detailed and we've laid a lot of wax in this board and we've edged it we've done and tipped the ends in to reduce any catching and this cap of the board is ready to rock and roll and have another great week on the snow. So uh, yeah, I'm really honored to do this. And the gentleman's dropped it off. It's what a lovely guy. And uh, I'm hopefully he'll be really, really pleased. We've done the best job we can to repair it um, for when you hit rocks and stuff. But again, if you maintain your stuff and look after it, you can get it back to this kind of condition. Yes, like I said, a few battle scars, but you know what? Those ba battle scars mean everything. because it means that you're ripping and have an awesome time. And now this thing is polished and detailed. So he will not be the slowest person on the mountain he will be one of the fastest. And that is the main thing. So it's about flying and having fun. Guys, that's it. I'm gonna polish up this top coat. Remember, gotta fit his step on Burton bindings, put the sticker on, but more importantly, when putting the screws in, use that Loctite 4243. Um, not a lot, just a little dab, just holds it in. Crank, 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 kind of go clockwise and anti-clockwise and diagonally to get the pressure even onto those bindings. Uh, we're going to get this all fitted up and get it back to the customer. But anyway, let me drop that down there. That's another board done in the Rhyme Right Waxing Workshop. Boom! Subscribe. That's it. Subscribe, guys. Follow me on Facebook. Follow me on Instagram. And uh, yeah, just thank you very much indeed for tuning in. But uh, yeah, till next time, we will see you soon. <laughs>